Tyranny is a role-playing video game developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Paradox Interactive. The game was released for Microsoft Windows, OS X, and Linux on November 10, 2016. While not a sequel, Tyranny builds upon the gameplay and engine used in Obsidian's previous title Pillars of Eternity, allowing the developers to spend more time on crafting a game where player choices have a more meaningful effect on the game's story. The game starts after the evil overlord Kairos has already conquered the world, and where the player character, a Fatebinder, is one of the higher-ranked members in Kairos' power structure. As a Fatebinder, the player must travel the world to help restore order after Kairos' victory, and make decisions on how to handle the various factions of survivors, which can affect what companions, spells, and abilities the player may select from. Synopsis Topic. Setting Tyranny takes place on Tyratus, a high fantasy world where technology is transitioning from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. The overlord Kairos, a godlike being of immeasurable power, is close to completing their over 400-year-long campaign to conquer Taratus and impose order, having already overtaken much of the land through force or intimidation. As part of Kairos' public persona, Kairos has remained unseen, leaving their subjects unsure if Kairos is male or female, a team, a title handed down in a dynasty, or a multi-headed beast. Beneath Kairos are the Archons, men and women imbued with strange and unique magical powers, made seemingly immortal by Kairos. Archons rule over regions, districts, armies, or individual groups on Kairos' behalf. Archons in tyranny include Executioner Bladen Mark, Archon of Shadows, the Plague Spreading Pox, Archon of Ruin, the Mighty Cairn, Archon of Stone, and Tunan the Adjudicator, Archon of Justice and Creator of the Fatebinders. Fatebinders are high-ranked agents in Kairos forces, tasked to travel the world to restore order, reduce conflict, and maintain Kairos rule, serving as judge, jury, and executioner. Tyranny takes place in the 431st year of Kairos' self-devised calendar in the region of the Tears, the final major area to be conquered. There is a rebellion brewing due to infighting between Kairos' two main forces in the Tears, the elite and disciplined disfavored led by Graven Ash, Archon of War, and the chaotic and barbarian Scarlet chorus led by the voices of Neret, Archon of Secrets. The player takes the role of a Fatebinder, tasked by Kairos to quell the rebellion or be destroyed along with everyone else in Vendryon's well. During the Fatebinder's quest, they can recruit a number of companions including, the Mage Surin, Archon of Song, the uncompromising Barak of the Stone Shields, the Fierce Warrior Verse, the Sage Lantry, the Water Mage E Flat, and the humanoid, Feral Beast Woman Kills in Shadow. The World of Tyranny also features a number of colossal ruins from a previous, unknown civilization. These include the old walls, magically attuned spans of walls that run for hundreds of miles, and the spires, monolithic towers that reach higher into the sky than most mountains. For reasons unknown, Kairos forbids entry to these structures on pain of death. Topic. Plot The game begins several years after the conquest of the Tears, the last major region that resisted Kairos' rule. A new rebellion has risen in the Tears' kingdom of Apex, in the region of Vendryon's well, and Kairos has grown angry with her army's failure to quell it. The Fatebinder is dispatched to Vendryon's well to resolve the bickering general's disputes and end the siege of the rebel fortress, or every living thing in that region will be destroyed by one of Kairos' edicts, a form of magical superweapon and one of the few ways Kairos directly enforces order throughout the realm. Working together with Graven Ash, Archon of War and Leader of the Disfavored, and the voices of Neret, Archon of Secrets and Leader of the Scarlet Chorus, the Fatebinder fights their way through the rebel forces to reach their fortress of Ascension Hall. When the time comes to assault the fortress, however, the feud between the two Archons climaxes, after the Fatebinder chooses one of the two armies to lead the assault, the other declares war on the opposing army in outrage. Despite this sudden conflict, the Fatebinder penetrates Ascension Hall and ends the siege with the help of their chosen army. Alternatively the Fatebinder could have secretly allied themselves with the rebels and betrayed both Archons. However, after fulfilling the terms of the edict and ending the siege, the diffused magic alters the Fatebinder in unforeseen ways. 
The Fatebinder finds themselves absorbing the power of Kairos Edict and transported to the summit of the mountain spire, the monolithic ancient tower at the center of Ascension Hall and one of many spires that dot the Tears and Northern Empire. The Fatebinder is the first person in recorded history to do so, causing much debate in imperial and tearsmen circles. Meanwhile the feud between Ash and Neret boils over into a full-scale civil war, the War of Archons, with the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus battling for control of the Tears. Tunan summons the Fatebinder to his court in the Bastard City to account for their actions and tasks them with investigating both Archons for treason, as this civil war has jeopardized the pacification of the region. Allying themselves with one of the armies in the war, or neither and following their own path or fighting for the rebels, the Fatebinder sets out to discover the nature of their newfound power and their connection with the spires, claiming new spires and growing in power along the way. In the process of aiding in the war effort for either side, or acting to help the people of the Tears or advance their own power, the Fatebinder finds themselves ending the three remaining edicts of Kairos in the Tears and absorbing their power. By killing the newborn region of Stalwart, or exploiting an ancient legal loophole renouncing her claims to the throne, the Fatebinder ends the Edict of Storms that had ravaged the Bladegrave. By destroying or claiming for themselves the silent archive of the sages from the Burning Library, the Fatebinder ends the Edict of Fire. By killing the petrified Archon of Stone, Cairn, either by releasing his power in a pulse that made the land unlivable or by a safer method, the Fatebinder ends the Edict of Stone in the Stone Sea. Once these have been completed, enemy forces attack the Fatebinder's original spire at Vendryan's well. In order to defeat the enemy, the Fatebinder channels their new power into the resonator atop the spire, casting their own edict without Kairos, implying that Kairos' own power may have originated from the spires. The Fatebinder's edict breaks the enemy army, but new threats emerge. The fact that anyone other than the Overlord could cast an edict spreads fear and awe across the world and the Fatebinder is now officially recognized by Kairos as an Archon, some ever whisper the possibility of a new Overlord. Kairos decrees that only one Archon in the Tears may rule the territory and orders them to fight to the death or swear loyalty. Additionally, Tunan summons the Fatebinder to court once more, Bladen Mark, Archon of Shadows, makes plans to assassinate the Fatebinder, and Kairos silently dispatches additional armies under Pox, Archon of Ruin, to wipe out the remaining combatants. The Fatebinder can kill Ash, Neret and Bladen Mark individually or travel at once to Tunan's court to face justice. At the court the Fatebinder must first present their evidence for the guilt of one or both of the Archons, a guilty verdict results in their execution by Bladen Mark, if he still lives. The second court case is the Fatebinders, pleading the case for their treasonous actions in the Tears. If the player successfully argues their case Tunan will declare the Fatebinder a greater servant of law and order than Kairos and pledge his fealty. Bladen Mark, if he still lives and has not been turned to the Fatebinder's cause, then attempts to kill the Fatebinder in Kairos' name. If the Fatebinder fails to convince Tunan, both he and Mark if still alive, must be fought and killed. With all opposition in the Tears defeated or in their service, it is uncovered that Kairos is sending another army to retake the Tears from whatever Archon is left and the Fatebinder must either surrender or retaliate by casting an edict on Kairos' capital. If the Fatebinder casts the edict then Imperial Throne is devastated and thousands begin to doubt the Empire's power and flock to the Fatebinder's banner as a new overlord. Pox's armies are given the order to retreat, a first for Kairos, and reinforce order as rebellions arise at home. If the Fatebinder surrenders and declares their loyalty for Kairos then Kairos accepts the surrender and pulls the armies back, allowing the Fatebinder to rule over the Tears as an Archon for the time being. The Fatebinder ponders on the future of the Tears and the Empire as the game ends. <laughs> Gameplay Tyranny is a computer role-playing game RPG using isometric user interface similar to Obsidian's Pillars of Eternity. Players take the role of the Fatebinder. The game opens in a board game like Conquest Mode that ties in with the character creation process. During Conquest Mode, the player makes decisions on how the world was conquered by Kairos and the Fatebinder's role in that. These decisions affect the state of the game's world and how various non-playable characters NPC react to the Fatebinder, particularly the various factions with which the Fatebinder can become allies or foes. 
The Fatebinder character is class-less, instead allowing the player to define the character's strength and weaknesses through a skill-based system that is based on how frequent they use certain skills. The Fatebinder may gain NPC companions over the course of the game. The Fatebinder has abilities in combat that can be influenced by which factions the character is aligned with, as well as combination attacks with companion NPCs. The player is able to craft magic spells for the Fatebinder. Each spell starts with a core attribute representing its elemental power such as fire or ice, and its appearance in use such as a directed bolt or a wide range cone. From there, the player can add accents that affect the strength, range, and other factors of the spell. Each added accent costs lore, points earned in the game, thus limiting how powerful the crafted spell can be. Decisions made by the player both at character creation and later in the game affect the game's world, making some conversation tree choices critical. For example, a certain decision may cause a magical fissure to open through the center of one of the towns, killing some NPCs and forcing the other NPCs to relocate to a neighboring town, altering the NPC's attitude towards the fate binder and what quests may be available. Due to the importance of these decisions, the player earns experience points for conversations as they would for participating in battles. Tyranny contains a number of options to adjust the difficulty of the game, in response to players' concerns from Pillars of Eternity. <laughs> <laughs> development The key concepts of Tyranny started with ideas in Obsidian Entertainment for a role playing game called Fury that they attempted to pitch in 2006, according to Obsidian CEO Fergus Urquhart. Fury would have featured a land ravaged by a magical apocalypse. Obsidian refined this idea for a new game Defiance that they started pitching in 2009, which now featured a land where evil had already won. Several ideas from Defiance were used to craft a new concept for Stormlands, a game the studio successfully pitched to Microsoft as a potential launch title for the Xbox One in 2012. Urquhart noted that Stormlands bore more resemblance to Fury than Defiance at this point. However, due to uncertainty in the video game market at that time, the game was cancelled, and Obsidian was forced to release 30 of its employees and put the studio at serious financial instability. However, the studio held onto the rights for Stormlands. Obsidian was able to recover financially through the Kickstarter backed role playing game, Pillars of Eternity, which allowed them to return to the concepts from Fury, Defiance, and Stormlands and build out a new title, Tyranny. Urquhart stated that, with Tyranny, they refined the Defiance idea more to make sure that the player was clearly aware that evil has won and having their character being part of that conquest. Game director Brian Hines said they wanted to avoid the mustache twiddling type of villainy in the game's concept, instead to allow the player to find a way for a villainous character to still become the hero of their own story. The developers also desired to make decisions made by the player have important ramifications, such as if the player opted to play as a good character acting against Kairos that they would find they would quickly make a lot of enemies by those decisions. Tyranny uses a modified version of the Unity engine used as the basis of Pillars of Eternity. Heinz said that since most of the technical issues of graphics and rendering were also solved with Pillars, they were free to flesh out a different type of role-playing game. Tyranny uses a skill-based growth system rather than a class-based one as with Pillars. Heinz said that they wanted to allow players to find ways to play a character they wanted instead of forced into a defined class. They also wanted to make sure that players could work to revamp characters midway through the game without penalty, avoiding the situation where a player may have built out a character that is difficult to use to progress into the late game. Veteran designer Chris Avalone, who left Obsidian in June 2015, had worked on the early development of Tyranny. According to Heinz, Heinz noted that some of the concepts of this intellectual property were constructed by Chris. Some of the characters have the same names he gave them and the same ideas. Much of the game involves making human non-player characters suffer under the Fatebinder's orders. According to director Brian Hines, the team was prepared to handle the type of depictions of these acts, as many had worked on South Park, The Stick of Truth, which had similar levels of crude and vulgar humor. Topic: <laughs> Promotion. 
Tyranny was announced at the 2016 Game Developers Conference in March 2016, and was exhibited in a playable demonstration form at the Electronic Entertainment Expo 2016 that June. The E3 demo included the same battle, though presented from three different scenarios based on the choices the player would have made earlier in the game. As to demonstrate how these choices affected combat and gameplay, Tyranny has been released on Microsoft Windows, OS X, and Linux systems on November 10, 2016. In addition to the standard game, there are two special editions, the Archon edition includes the game's soundtrack and other digital art assets, while the Overlord edition further includes a digital art book and collector's guide. Reception Tyranny received positive reviews upon its release, it is currently listed on Metacritic with a score of 81 one hundredths based on 67 reviews, indicating, "...generally favorable reviews." Praise was given to the game's deeper exploration of evil than other narratives, as well as its world-building and mysteries. Criticisms were leveled at its combat AI, and the abrupt end to the story. See also List of Paradox Interactive Games List of PC games <laughs>